as a minister of the church, I found God and Jesus years ago. But finding myself, my very soul, well, that's a different story. I've discovered what I'm looking for is in the eyes and lives of others. Those who are struggling, searching, living life on the edge right now, at that very friction point of change. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to be after 12 months in jail. And I thought, yeah, I could do something with this. I spent the first 37 years of my life people phobic. I couldn't talk to people. I couldn't even face people without going into horrific panic attacks. I used to be a thief. I grew up in the Gold Coast and I used to steal from the rich and give the poor, poor me. And <laughs> I had a house, a missus, a car. I had all that. The love that the world offers me, I left behind. This is my hibernation. It's a bit, I've had a, uh, we've had rain. And uh, so everything's got drenched. I'm starting the thesis, and so I've got my typewriter to do my thesis. I've got all my study books. It's my little sleep spot there. I just use that for a spare, for a junk pile, actually. I realised I was simple. I used to go to all the drug dealers, all the big motorbike gangs and uh, <clears throat> believed all their puffed up knowledge, their swelling of the word. And then re I realised I was simple to do that. I was giving, telling them everything and doing everything to suck up their asses. But basically I was just being, I was simple. Help me God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. What they suffer, I suffer. What they learn, I learn. I was 12 years old when I first tried heroin. Um, my father actually gave it to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, you get that. I have been out of home for 12 years now. I find it a bit hard as a 12 year old girl now being a 25 year old, um, living on the streets for that amount of time and running from here to there all the time and not having somewhere stable and no proper accommodation. My dad was an alcoholic, um, he was a real bad drug user. Yeah, I come from a very um, violent childhood. I don't have anywhere to live, I can't house my kids or my partner, I don't have anywhere for them to call home. There's a lot of druggos down here, there's a lot of needles in the park. It's a bit rough, you've got everyone down here, you've got people that have got real bad mental problems and just, yeah, you just got to look at them sideways and they go, rah, oh. I just stick to myself and just keep out of their way. <laughs> As my partner has just um, come out of a brain injury and he should be housed and support, being support, but there's nothing for, that I can do and yeah, it really hurts. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty tough. <laughs> Their struggle is my struggle. I copped a belting one night because I picked the winner of the Melbourne Cup and he didn't. Sometimes he broke in through the windows and I'd have to somehow race out the back door and hide. Everything in your house was a potential weapon of death. And because I lived so long on a razor's edge, never knowing what he would do next, never knowing how he would come home. When he passed away, I, I just hit it. As I say, I always enjoyed 
drinking. I had a lot of fun with it. But um, when he passed away, I, I happened upon um, a whole bunch of Irish folk. And I was suddenly having fun. For the first time in eight years, I was laughing again. But because all this, the, him dying and everything that I'd, had gone before that, I was laughing, but at the same time I wasn't dealing with anything that was going on internally. And then I'd go home and back on the floor I was and cry. Their loss is my loss. I left time when I was 13, doing drugs, selling drugs. You know, I, I, went, I went to jail for manslaughter. I, I don't sleep much, a couple of hours sleep a night, you know, and that's, that's try, you know, and that's trying to sleep. I'm angry, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm angry all the time, you know. I've got to jump through, you know, the system. We're homeless, mate, we don't, oh, I better check my personal calendar this morning, you know, like, you know, oh. Oh, I just wish I could just go, go to a job board and just pull a job off the board and apply for a job myself, you know, like, I'm just a blank. So I go to my job network right, once a month. Yeah, once a month, right? And I'm in there for five minutes and they go, all right, here's your job activity agreement, right? So they want me, they want me to do um, a rehab as, as my job activity. I don't want rehab as a job activity, I want a job as a job activity. The majority of us, are, you know, have, have, have been outcasted from our family for, for whatever reason, you know, and we're on our own. You know, so that's why you, uh, well, we are a big family, mate, like, us, like, because we, well, we're the Hyde Park boys, mate. A lot of our mates die. Half the time their own families don't even know they're dead. You know, and it, it, it sucks, you know. Well, who cares if some guy just dies on the street? It happens all the time, mate. Every couple of weeks someone's dying, mate, around here. Oh, we're sleeping right here on the ground where this camera is. That's where I slept last night. There now is my now. We are all each other.